to my channel. Make sure that you hit like and subscribe so you can always be a part of our doodle community whenever new videos come on. We are going to draw the coolest little cartoon doodle of Martin Luther King Jr. So Martin Luther King Jr. is actually a civil rights activist from the 50s and the 60s. And he was a very important man. He marched to get equal rights for all people. So this is back in a time, and 40, 50, 60, this is only like 80 years ago, 70, 80 years ago, 80, 90. <laughs> I can't do math. <sighs> and it's not as long as you'd think where people weren't equal. So first thing I'm gonna do first head is draw a nice big oval shape, but I want the top of his head to be a little more flat. So I don't want it to be a pointy oval, perfect round. I want it to kind of be a little more squared off up there. And then if you have your marker, you can start adding in his tight curly hair. So he's an African-American and they tend to have a more curly, always have curly hair. Some of, some people have just, I have curly hair, not quite like this. They have much tighter, curlier hair but I have always been the one who hated my curls and wanted to get rid of them. And I'm sure everybody has a hairstyle they wish that they could get rid of. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. had a very well manicured hair, I guess. So we don't wanna make our curls too crazy. We want them to kind of be close to his head. So I'm just doing like little loops so I get the curl look, but I don't want big gaps. I don't want his head to look, you know, weird. And I don't want him to look like he has so much hair. Um, I wanna just kind of keep it, you know, close to his head, nicely done. Maybe he like just got a fresh haircut kind of look. All right, now, this is his head, this is his face. We're gonna give him a nice wide nose. So every person, every different different ethnicity or culture, they kind of have different facial features. So some people might have really big eyes, some people might have shorter, rounder eyes, some people might have flatter, wider eyes. Everybody kind of has their own little uniqueness to them depending on kind of what culture or what ethnicity you are. So African-American people have shorter, wider noses, not shorter, but flatter. So it's gonna be a little bit flatter against your face and they're gonna be a little bit wider. Now this is very exaggerated, but that's because he's a cartoon. Well, um, Caucasian people are gonna have pointier, skinnier noses. So we're gonna go in, we've given him his eyes, we're gonna give him two eyebrows. He was a very smart individual, so we want to give him little eyebrows, put his eyeballs going up, make him think, and he is in the heart of his civil rights speech, and he is just, he was a wonderful. We need more Martin Luther King Juniors in our world. Maybe we would have a little more love and a little less hate. So we're going to give him his mustache. So he had a pretty good thick mustache. I don't want to make it too big. But I do want to draw in that mustache. So when you do a cartoon character of a real person, it's kind of important to get the features that are very iconic of that person. So wide nose, short hairdo, mustache, those are some very important things to make sure that we kind of have in our character. So a little smile. You could give him his mouth open if you want and have him saying those famous words, I have a dream, or you could just leave it closed like I will. I'm still going to put those words in there, but you know, <laughs> we're going to go directly under his neck and we're going to do two lines that kind of come in at an angle and then a straight line across. This is going to be his tie. This was a very well-dressed man. Those are one in a million. And he always had on that nice little suit, tie, everything. So now next to that, kind of square shape, we're gonna make two V's. And then between those V's, we're gonna make another V. So now I'm gonna kind of go in just a little bit and make another V. Bottom of this square shape, we are gonna come down diagonally for his tie. So now we've got the knot of his tie, the base of his tie, and the collar of his dress shirt. So now what we need to do is make the collar of his suit jacket. 
When was the last time you wore a suit? I think my son has only worn a suit to like weddings or funerals. Even funerals, I don't even think we've made him wear a suit. And my husband rarely wears one. He doesn't have to wear one for work. I don't know. This kind of aura just doesn't exist anymore. It's sad. So on the side, we're going to do kind of very short, wide V shapes, almost like a greater than and less than symbol. And those are going to be the top part of the collar for his jacket. Then I'm going to come out a little bit, out a little bit, and then I'm going to come in and meet the bottom of my um, V shape here. So now I've got the outer part of his jacket. We've got his t-shirt. We've got his, we've got everything going on there. All right. Now we want him to have kind of a big head. He's going to kind of have a bigger body, but I do want to make him kind of on the shorter body side. I don't know. It makes my cartoons look funny. It's kind of just what I like to do. Over here, I'm going to come out with a little line. Doesn't need to be a huge line. Same thing over here. I want him to look like he's celebrating. I mean, he just gave this amazing speech, hoping that all Americans in the entire world, that every race would just become one and be treated equally. So we want to have him, we want him celebrating, right? He made a very big difference. All right, we're going to come in at an angle. I want where his sleeves are going to be to be much shorter. And then we'll draw a line across, line across, straight line. And then, actually, I'm going to bring this one down just a little bit more. Then we're going to come down for his suit jacket. Okay? It's come together, right? We'll go across, bring this line down a little more. I went down a little too far. And then this one, I do want to come in just a little bit shorter. Because your jacket, even though they're probably pretty even, I, want, I don't want to have a perfect line going across. All right, and since this one's a little shorter, this one's a little longer, this is the side that's going to get the buttons. So we're going to add a couple little buttons there for the suit jacket. And his hands, we're going to make his hands. Actually, let's start with this one. We're going to start with the thumb. Now, if you're really not good at making hands, you hate doing it, you don't want to do it at all, just go ahead and give him mitten hands. Just come around with a big circle and your hands are done. But when you do a cartoon character, if you're going to do fingers, you're going to have one thumb, so one shorter, and then you're going to get three bigger fingers and you're finished so one thumb three bigger fingers one two and three and you're done nothing super special four fingers max and you can do them however you want all right for his legs so now we're going to come in quite a bit because his suit jacket is definitely going to be much kind of wider I guess than his body we're going to do a line down line out a little bit not much we don't want to go down too far and then we're going to do his pants the same way that we kind of did his arms. They're going to be bigger towards his upper part of his legs, just like it's bigger towards the inner part of his body. And then it's going to get a little smaller, not too small, but a little smaller. And we're going to do a curved line this time because your pant leg is going to have a little more of a curve to it. So we're going to add that little curve and then we're going to give him his shoes. So we're going to come right around and in nicely dressed man he's gonna need some nice dress shoes so you're just gonna kind of come around and then those dress shoes are just gonna be basic black don't even need to do laces or anything fancy you can actually oh, color them in just with your your sharpie make sure you have a protective paper underneath your work if that's what you're doing so now we have our adorable little Martin Luther King Jr. Now we need our markers, our crayons, whatever we want to color him in with. All right. So let me see if I can put that together. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to use that same honey brown that I used on my little cheerleader in another video because I think it's a good brown. It's not super dark. And I want you to pay attention to the colors. So the one thing that I can't stand the most as an art teacher is the use of the word black and white. So we refer to African-American people as black and we refer to um, Caucasian people as white. I'm not white. They're not black. We need to kind of use the tone when, especially in art, for the colors that we're using. So I'm not coloring him with the black I drew him with because he's not black, he is brown. So we wanna make sure that we have the right color. Just like if you were gonna color me, you're not gonna use a white crayon because this is not my skin color. I am a peach, oh, there goes my back, there it goes. So 
And depending on other people, Hawaiian people, I like to use like caramel, brown. I think that there's a lot of different terms that you can use to help get your colors a little more accurate when you are doing your art. Instead of using, you know, basic terms that we might use every day, like black, white, and things like that. So I am going to go to, I'm going to get a red. I think the picture, even though a good majority of the pictures are black and white, <laughs> the two colors that I hate the most, um, I do think that in colored pictures, pictures that are in color, he is wearing a red tie. So I want to make sure he has this red tie. Because remember, iconic things that kind of make you really see that person are very important when you're doing a cartoon. So... I'm going to go back. I'm going to color his buttons in yellow. They may not have been yellow, but I mean, they're buttons. Who's really going to care? And then what I want to do is I want to find a gray. I don't want to do a suit black, even though his suit was black. And I want to come in with this gray because when I go in and add my darker shadows, it's going to help make this kind of have its own lights and darks. So I'm going to use a gray marker. I'm coloring with the angled side. Filling this bad boy in. He's so cute. I love coloring in and drawing cartoons. I just love giving little tiny characters just a little bit of life. It's just so much fun to me. And you can come up with anybody. And when you're off school on Monday for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, maybe you look up what he did. Look up the kinds of things that he believed in and what he marched for and what he really wanted America to see. I think children are a huge example of loving everybody. I My favorite is when my kindergartners are just, they are friends with every person in that classroom. It doesn't matter whether you're rich, you're poor, you're brown, you're peach, you're from the moon. If an alien walked through the door, I think a kindergartner would offer a pencil <laughs> and give them half their sandwich. Kindergartners are just... They are the ones that I feel like we could all, as people, learn from the most. Because they just, they love everybody and everything. When I would take my son to the park when he was little, every f person who showed up, he had to go, okay, do you want to play? Do you want to play? Do you want to play? But when you get older, it's like different. It's just harder. And I think that we kind of just lose that fun side of us. So if you're a kiddo... Don't lose that fun side. Stay friends with everybody because this little cartoon man right here, he would love that you love everybody. Because that's all he wanted. He just wanted everybody to love each other, get along, have the same rights, and just be treated like equals. So let's color a little shadow by his pants going down. Not a big one, just a little. Again, I just wanted his suit to have a little bit of some lights and some darks. Um, if I colored it black with my marker, he would be, it would just be black. It'd be a very black suit. It would almost look like just a shape instead of like, um, like an actual outfit. So I definitely didn't want to do that. Now I need to find a darker brown so I can add a little... How did I already lose my darker brown? Let's try this one. This one's a little red, but let's see what it does. Oh, it's all right. So let's add a little value by his hands around his hairline. So wherever you have, remember, curves on the face where these cheek, like the curves for his cheeks would be, we definitely want to add a little dark. I don't even know if you can see this crayon. It's not dark enough for me. But black is too dark. Black's just not, it's not going to work. Now gray and black go together. Black and brown, not so much. I want to add a little shadow by his nose. It's all right. I think he's perfect. All right. And then he is celebrating. So let's write, I have. He still has that dream. Even though he is no longer alive, he is still dreaming about a day with peace and equality. I have a dream. Boom! Look at our adorable little Martin Luther King Jr. Look at him! He's so stinking cute. You know what else you do? You could add a little podium. You could add so many little things to this doodle if you wanted to get into it. Learn about him. Read about him. 
do something on your school day off for like 20 minutes. Just go read about Martin Luther King on your iPad and then maybe add something special that you learned about into your doodle. It's a good thought, right? <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day off of school and a wonderful day remembering this great man. Please like, subscribe, share the video and have a great day. Goodbye.